Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Tanush, and I'm a junior here at ISU. I'd like to start my speech off with a quote. The pessimist sees difficulty in every opportunity, while the optimist sees opportunity in every difficulty, by Winston Churchill. The more I think about this quote, the more it starts to relate to me. My passion for buildings, their overall structure and complexity, learning different ways they can soar as tall as the clouds, to different ways they can affect and influence the community around me. However, living in a country with fewer opportunities can feel somewhat diminishing. Access to resources, advanced technology, mentorship are so limited. Having noticed how apartments, hotels, office buildings, malls so rarely seem to exceed 12 or maybe 13 stories, as a matter of fact, did you know that currently the tallest building in Uganda is the URA building, standing at 22 stories tall? You might be thinking, that's actually quite tall, right? Perhaps. But let's put in some comparisons. The Empire State Building is 103 stories tall, while the Burj Khalifa is 163 stories tall. Not to mention their amazing complex structures and beauty that's done to perfection. This begs the question, why is it that some countries are unable to meet the standards set by other countries. I believe it comes down to a number of different factors. One is the lack of advanced technology, and another is the lack of the core understanding of the engineering behind it. However, there's more to it. Did you know that even though Uganda has a stunning urbanization rate of 5.2%, 28% of urban households are restricted access to things as necessary as water, sanitation, energy, all of these factors add up to something that holds our country back. And so for such, for such reasons, hold, having such aspirations and living in Uganda can feel somewhat contradictory. On one hand, I have these out-of-reach life dreams, and on the other, the scarce resources lead me to face the stark realities of never reaching my aspirations. It's almost like a wingless bird dreaming of the day it leaps off its nest. It's a horrifying feeling, but a temporary feeling. Our situations are never a reason to abandon our buildings, I mean, sorry, our dreams, but the reasons to push harder than ever. The futures we aspire to create have to be constructed brick by brick. And yes, every once in a while you have to stop, cement your goals and reinforce them, but you always keep going. The thing about opportunity and prospect is that it all comes down to who we are and how we want to form the world around us. Civil engineering is often thought of as just building things and learning about different structures. While that is partially true, there's so much more to it. The buildings we create can do things as vast as boosting their entire economy to something as little as giving a family a safe place to live. In my personal aspirations, I envision Uganda with efficient transportations, innovative and sustainable buildings, energy and water made accessible to every last citizen. And all of this is made possible through my aspirations as a civil engineer. So imagine the world we could create through all of our aspirations combined together. So as the road ahead may seem so distant, filled with intimidating uncertainties, I've learned that success does not come from waiting for that one perfect opportunity to come to your doorstep. It's about making your own as well. Not just, and that's what prospect truly means, not just a future you desire, but the actions you take to get there, knowing that when opportunities are scarce, we make our own, we problem solve, and find unique ways to turn our aspirations into realities. And this brings me to someone who's been a real inspiration for me recently, and that's E. Sridharan. E. Sridharan was a renowned civil engineer in India known as Metro Man. But maybe a little more context is necessary, right? E. Sridharan was a civil engineer appointed behind the Delhi Metro project. And the Delhi Metro project was a bold step in the war against traffic congestion and air pollution. Can you imagine, through his implementation of the Metro, he managed to reduce vehicular transportation by so much that he cut down carbon dioxide emissions by 630,000 tons per year. That's equivalent to almost 105,000 elephants worth of carbon dioxide saved. I think it goes without saying that a project as huge as this didn't exactly go through in the smoothest of ways. 
He faced barriers at every corner, things like bureaucratic interferences, skepticism, tight deadlines, political interferences. But instead of sitting back and watching his dream derailed in front of him, he set down a number of, impl of, a number of policies to fight off some of the most powerful people in the country just to keep his dream alive. Simultaneously, the key to Sridharan's success was not just his, his resilience, but his ability to comprehend and efficiently use the, the resources and opportunities he had accessible to him in the moment. He took so much time investing into a highly motivating team that very well could have been the deciding factor on the success of this project. What I'm trying to say is sometimes our pride and other circumstances in our life force us to make decisions that aren't always in the best interest of our lives, our futures, and our desires. You know, I sometimes see myself in my math class, and as the concepts start to get harder, binomial expansion and logarithms, I struggle to find myself asking for help because I'm worried it's going to make me look less compared to my, my classmates. But maybe my perspective has been wrong this whole time. Maybe if I'd seen it as an opportunity, a resource to grow and learn and become better and change, I could be in a whole different situation right now. I'd like to share one more quote with you. It's not your lack of resources. It's your lack of resourcefulness that'll stop you, by Tony Robbins. Whether it's a textbook, a mentor, or an idea scribbled on a paper, resources are everywhere around us. And as Tony Robbins said, it's only your lack of resourcefulness that can stop you at the end of the day. All of this talk about opportunities and resources but how do we actually find them? How do we use them efficiently to help boost our lives? For this exact reason, I've created a six-step process. Step one is cultivating an awareness of your surroundings. You know, finding opportunities isn't as easy as you may think. They're often hidden right in front of you or in places you'd never think to look at. And other times, we might just identify an opportunity and instead choose to overlook them. And I think this is one of the most dangerous things we can do for our own futures. I remember in grade nine, as I was going into my basketball tryouts, the basketball coach asked to, um, <laughs> sorry, asked to give me a special, a special training before the tryouts. And I remember thinking to myself, why would I need extra training? I'm definitely going to make the team. And while I did make the team, the problem started about a month later. As the drills got harder, I started to struggle to keep up with the rest of the team. And as this continued, the coaches started to lose their faith in me. And through this, I spent more time on the bench than the court itself. But maybe if I'd used that opportunity when I had it, I would have never been in that situation in the first place. You know, it's so fascinating how an opportunity can have so much value to one person, but be so insignificant to another. A builder can use a ladder to push their building up an entire story, and that same ladder can be used by someone to pick up a jar from their cabinets. So it's up to us to identify which opportunities will help us, will make us better, will make us change for the better. And this leads me to step two, which is using your resources. This might be somewhat obvious, but success will not always come from the, from the magnitude of the resources you have, but how you use them. You know, I would like you to take a moment to think. Which opportunities, which resources have you had recently? And then I want you to think, how could you have used that resource to push yourself up to a whole new level? Life is like a staircase in so many ways. And I like to think of opportunity as that initiative you take to step forward and improve yourself each time. Step three, advice. Sometimes we struggle to identify opportunities or know how to use them or when to use them. And in times like this, it's so easy to feel demoralized and confused. But instead of sitting back and watching those opportunities pass you by, I urge you to take that moment to find help. Because once that opportunity passes you by, you might never get it back. You know, my dad always likes to say, precaution is the best medicine. And I find this so interesting because it teaches you to always stay ahead of yourself. If you have the opportunity to use a resource or something that can help you, why would you wait for it to leave you behind? Use that opportunity before it can go. 
And that's where step four comes in. Take action. It's always the most important thing with things like opportunity is to use them before they expire because they're not constants in your life. They will leave you behind. And here's the thing. Life will always try to take advantage of you, advantage of you diminish your capabilities. But you have to step forward and push yourself ahead of your limits. Step five, I personally believe, is one of the most important steps because everyone always seems to underestimate them. And that's to embrace your failures. People always think failures are the end, but they're actually just stepping stones. I learned this firsthand in year four when we had a physics project on designing a bridge that was supposed to hold a certain amount of loads. And I remember in that moment, I tried to build a bridge that was more physically beautiful rather than something that was set out for the task it was meant to do. And watching my teacher put that second load on and watching it crumble apart, that very failure became my greatest moment, sorry, became my greatest teacher in that moment. So through that failure, I was able to learn that next time I should look at different shapes, different materials, different ways to improve stability. Each failure, no matter how disheartening, is a piece of a puzzle. And that piece of a, that puzzle is what leads to something extraordinary. Step six. Step six is um, basically about keeping a vision of your prospect. So uh, keeping a vision of your prospect is basically like a lighthouse, it's like a lighthouse guiding you through a storm. You know, our situations change so much and our dreams change so much. It's important to keep what you want to do true to yourself. You have to, stay, you have to always stay honest with yourself and remind yourself of what you want to do. Because like I said before, life will create a storm for you. And in that moment, it's so hard to remember who you want to be and how, who you want to become. So, you know, sometimes as I'm scrolling through Instagram, I see this page called Lemme Talks, and I'm sure many of you know him, but he basically goes through these Ivy League applications, and every once in a while, there'll be that one applicant who's at the age of 19, the CEO of a billion dollar tech company, has a 4.0 GPA with a 1600 SAT, and sometimes seeing this level of competition out there can make us feel so little. The thing is that such thinking is so normal, but that doesn't make it necessary. Sometimes I think it's better to just wipe your mind as clean as a slate, and instead, remind yourself why you're doing everything that you're doing. So, as I stand here today, what opportunities are you picking away from life? What resources are you using to push yourself to another level? We all have the power to build our own future, brick by brick, just like a skyscraper. But before I let the speech come to an end, I'd like my parents to stand up, please. I'd like, this to, I'd like to take this moment to really thank the both of you. Everything you've done for me, the opportunities, the resources, the sacrifices you've created for me. I love both of you with my life and I'll never forget everything you've done for me. So thank you.